Hey guys, this is part two in my Stage Tracks 3 video series. In today's video, we're going over multi track backing track outputs as well as looping sections of a song with backing tracks. So, with a multi track backing track, you can send multiple different stems using Stage Tracks. So, you can send six separate outputs on six separate channels. So, you can separate drums, bass, synth, and guitars plus click and cues, for example. I'm also gonna show you how to loop different sections and rearrange a song as well. So with backing tracks, most of the time you have to stay exactly on the structure of however you've programmed the backing tracks. But with stage tracks, you can actually, you know, repeat the last chorus two times if you feel like it, or play the guitar solo eight bars instead of four bars if you feel like it, or, you know, go back to the bridge at the end. You can do a lot of really cool stuff with this app, which is really cool because it gives variety to the backing track, so it's not just the exact same show every night, which is pretty cool. So like I said, this is part two. In part one, I went over the basic setup and I went over all of these topics. So if you're interested in seeing those, be sure to watch part one. You still should be able to follow along for the most part if you haven't seen part one, but I do recommend watching part one first. And don't forget, one of my subscribers is going to win a full unlocked version of this one. So you'll have the full version and all the features and everything. I'll be doing a giveaway to one of my subscribers. So be sure to subscribe in order to win that. All right, let's go ahead and get started with part two of Stage Tracks 3. Be sure to use the timestamps down below if there's a specific topic that you're interested in checking out. Okay, so in the first part, I showed you how to just do a single file output for backing tracks. That's an easier method, but Stage Tracks 3 is capable of doing six separate outputs. So you could have six separate stems for your backing tracks. So you can send drums on one, bass on another, backing vocals on another, keys on another, and clicking cues on another one. Just keep in mind, you cannot pitch shift and you cannot change the tempo of songs with this method. So you gotta decide if it's worth it for you to do this. So you're gonna hit this plus symbol up here. And this time you're gonna hit create multi-track song. So give it a name. So I'm gonna do December again, just like I did in the last video, except I'm gonna do it as a multi-track. Hit create. And you can see, see I already have December in here and other ones where it just says PDF, but you can see right here it says multi-track. That's how you can tell that there's a difference. So I'm gonna hit the I button right here. All this other stuff in here, everything is the same, except now you have configure multi-track playback. So I'm gonna click that. And then you can see here, this is where you get your main outputs. Now, before we do that, actually, I want you to do something in your settings. I want you to go to settings and audio routing. We're gonna get back to this page in a minute, but I want you to name the six different outputs that you're gonna get because you want to always have them be the same output. You don't want to put drums as track one for one of them and then bass for track one for another one and then backing vocals for another one. It's gonna make things confusing. So I'm gonna do them in this order. I'm gonna do track one is always gonna be drums. Track one, drums, track two, T bass, bass, track three tracks, track four is backing vocals, and then track five is a click, and then track six is the cues that go to our ears. The only reason I do it in this order is because that's the order that I do it in when I create backing tracks. I have an entire breakdown video of how I create backing tracks. So watch that video if you're interested in creating backing tracks. I do a whole step-by-step -step guide. So now that that is configured, now I can go back into the song, again, going back into December, configure multi-track playback. So I'm gonna find the file. So I've dragged and dropped them in as a folder in stage tracks. So, you know, if I search December, I have a folder for December stems. Again, you can airdrop that or drop that from files from your computer like I did in the last video. So for the first one, I'm going to load in drums. For the second one, I'm going to load in bass. Third one, tracks. Fourth one, backing vocals. So five is click. And then six is cues. So now all of those are in here. So now you can mute some of them. So if I want to mute, drum, mute drums and bass and just have the other ones, I can listen to it. If you want to see the waveform, I can scroll through up here if you want to see. So like hit generate while well, drums are already up there. If I want to see the waveform for bass, I would hit generate waveform. And then the bass has shown up up here on the top and I can scroll around and listen. I can hit play. And I can mute certain stuff. So if I want to mute the drums, mute the bass, Mute the click, mute the backing vocals. Main riff. So now it's just the cues and the tracks. But now here's the drums and so on and so forth. And you also have an equalizer for each of them. So if the drums, you know, if I want to change the EQ on one of them, I have that option right here. You have a, a volume adjustment and a panning adjustment as well. Um, you can double tap to reset it back. So for drums, I'm going to leave that completely centered. Bass, I'm going to pan to the left. Tracks are going to be centered. Backing vocals will be panned to the right. Click will be panned to the left. 
and cues will be panned to the right. I will show you why in a minute. The main reason that I'm doing this is because drums and tracks will be sent out in stereo, and then bass, vocals, click, and cues will be sent out as mono. That's how I want to route it. it makes the most sense. You don't really need stereo bass. That's why I'm doing it, but just remember the panning, and I'll show you why here in a minute. It'll make sense in a little bit. Okay, so now that the multi-tracks are imported, now we have to go configure this into global settings. So let's get out of here, go to settings, and then you're gonna click audio routing. Remember this screen right here? So the important thing down here is the multi-track routing. So you can either set the track off or you can set it out main output, aux one, aux two, or aux three. So right now, all the options that I have, you know, so if I click main output, that gives me just speaker output because nothing is connected. So I need to connect a lightning to USB B cable into my Behringer XR18. In order to get multi-track outputting, it has to be out USB out of the lightning because that's how you process multi-tracks out of an iPad pad or an iPhone. You can still use the headphone jack, but that's still just one output. In order to do multi-track output, it has to be done with USB. So you either need to get a lightning to USB cable or a lightning to USB adapter and then use, you know, a standard USB A to USB B cable. All those cables will be linked down below. So your interface will be different for everything. There's one that I really want to look at. It's called the track rig. I've been looking into getting that. So maybe someday I will get it. You can do this with an audio interface. It does not have to be a mixer. Everything's going to be slightly different, but I'm going to show you how it works with the XR18. So right now it says speaker. As soon as I plug it in, you will see that it gives me the options. Now it says main output is routed to the XR18 channels one and two. Aux one is three and four. Aux two is five and channels five and six. Aux three is channels seven and eight and so on and so forth. I can click those and I can start changing them. So I can say, do I want it to go out, you know, seven and eight instead for the main output, which actually I'm going to do. I'm going to route these slightly different. Main output is going to go to seven and eight. Aux one is going to go to nine and 10. Aux two, 11 and 12. Aux three, 13 and 14. That's how I have them out. You do have an option to do a mono output if you want, and you can combine USB and headphone outs. So you can see when I enable that, they can combine USB and headphone out. Now it will give me an option to send out headphones or the audio interface. I'm going to unplug the headphone. I'm not going to be using that. But that can be nice because then you could run, you know, headphone out as the click out and that can go to your drummer or something like that. Again, we're focusing on routing here and it'll make sense in a minute. So now where do I want to assign these to? Where would you like to route things? So keep in mind, I have six different stems, six, six different tracks, but I only have four outputs, main output and then aux one, two, three. This is why I did the panning on the tracks. So bass, backing vocals, click and cues will be in mono and the drums and the backing tracks will be in stereo, remember? So this is how I'm gonna route it. So drums, which is track one, is gonna go to aux one. Bass, track two, is gonna go to aux two. Track three is the backing tracks. So that's gonna go out main. Track four is backing vocals, which I'm gonna send out aux two. And then click and cues, I'm gonna send those out aux three. So let's think about this. Tracks are going out the main output, which is routed to channel seven and eight. That means the tracks will go into channel seven and eight on my mixer as a stereo file. Drums are set to go out aux one, which is routed to go into my mixer on channels nine and 10. That means the drums will be sent as a stereo file to inputs nine and 10 on my mixer. But what about the mono ones? Bass and vocals are going to aux two, which is assigned to go to the input channel 11 and 12 of my mixer. But the bass was panned all the way to the left and vocals were panned all the way to the right. That means that the bass will be alone on track 11 and the vocals will be on track 12. Makes sense? That's why I did the panning. I need a mono bass and a mono backing vocal. That's why I panned it hard left and hard right. Same with click and cues. That's routed to aux three, which is routed to input 13 and 14 on my mixer. The click is panned all the way to the left. Therefore, it will be on channel 13 on my mixer. And the cues are panned all the way to the right, which means it will be only on channel 14 on my mixer. Makes sense? It, it's a little bit confusing, but once we get to the mixer part, I think it'll make more sense. Okay, so the XR18, it's a digital mixer. This isn't really a lesson about the XR18, but I'll show you how I have it set up. But you will have to figure this out based on your audio interface. This is an iPad that I have that's controlling the mixer. It's all digital. So on this one, what I need to do is I need to go in. So for channels 7 through 14, I'm going to click it. This is the Mixing Station app. I love this app. It's such a good app. Um, but I'm on channel 7, and I need to go to Configure. And right now it says it's asking for you know an audio input, but I need to set that to USB input. I'm going to hit this arrow button. I'm going to go to channel 8, do the same thing. Next one, channel 9. I'm going to go over and do that for all of them up to channel 14 because I am sending audio over USB. The other thing that I need to do is I need to go to channel 7 and I need to link it with channel 8 because this is a stereo file. And then I'm going to go to channel 9 and I'm going to link it as well with channel 10. I'm going to name these really quick just to make it 
easier to see what's going on. Okay, so now I have them labeled properly, right? So I have tracks configured and I have it set to come in USB channel seven, seven and eight, cause they're linked together. Drums are configured to go in USB channel nine and 10. Bass on 11, backing tracks on 12, click on 13, cues on 14. It's exactly how I have this set up. So let me go ahead and turn, I'm gonna turn everything down. So watch what happens. So on this one, so when I hit play, ready, go. you can see it has the click and the cues going. So here's the click. And then let me start it, let me start it. Let me move it up to about where the chorus comes in. You'll see the chorus, the cues coming. Chorus, ready, go. Right, and then I can bring up the drums. Can bring up the bass. Can bring up the backing vocals. Where are they? Come on. There we go. And I can bring up the tracks. So now I can do, you know, I can mix these separately. I have stereo tracks, stereo drums, mono bass, mono backing vocals and separate control over the click and separate control over my cues which is exactly how i want it to be so there you go you have multiple outputs with one cable from an ipad or an iphone pretty sweet just keep in mind the thing that's nice about this is that you can quickly adjust on the fly so if i go right here uh, if the track is December, playing let me go ahead and guitar, fast forward it through i'm just going to put everything even right now but if i push this button right here i can mute stuff I can mute the drums, mute the bass, mute the tracks, mute the vocals, mute the click, mute the cues, so I can have whatever I want in here. Chorus again. So I will go ahead and pause that. They also have the ability to adjust. So if the drums were way too loud, I can adjust it right here. So I need to set it down by, you know, six decibels or whatever. I'm going to reset that. You also can redo the painting if you screwed up for some reason. And you do get access to your equalizer right here. So this can be really nice. So I've had that done before where I, you know, mixed out just as a single file. I'm like, oh man, I mixed those drums too loud. Now I could actually just turn it down, which would be, which is really cool. The other thing that is great is that my wife and I have a band and we either perform as a two piece, as a three piece with a drummer or as a four piece with a bassist and a drummer. So we use tracks for whoever is missing. So when we're a three piece band, I need to mute the drums, right? So what I have been doing, for example, here's Dirty Little Secret. Dirty Little Secret two means we're performing as a two piece. Dirty Little Secret three means we're performing as a three piece and four means we're performing as a four piece. Dirty Little Secret two has drums and bass in it. Dirty Little Secret three has no drums, but it has bass in it. And then Dirty Little Secret four has no bass and no drums in it, but all the other backing tracks. That's the way I've been doing it so far. But what I can do now instead, if I'm at a show, we're performing as a three piece. I don't need drums, right? Drums are on track one. Here's all I do. Drums off. Now, December, here's December, for example, if I fast forward, in. you can see there's nothing coming in on the drums. Nothing is here Chorus because again. I have muted it here. So I want to turn it back on. Now it's going out box one. But if I'm just like, okay, master control over the out, out of the routings, I want the drums off. Next time that we play as a two piece and we need drums in the tracks, I put it on there. If we play as a four piece and no drums and no bass, I turn them off right here. See how cool this is? This is really, really awesome. And I might actually start doing that. I'd have to re-export like 300 songs. So I haven't decided on that yet, but that's really, really cool. Just remember, you cannot adjust the tempo or change the key with a multi-track output. So if you remember when you click up here, you would have with a regular file, you would have change the key and change the pitch. You don't have that in here. So it's up to you to decide if you need that or not. Okay, one more thing here that I want to show you. What I've done is I've unplugged the USB and I've configured it just to come out headphone out. So this is actually the way that we do this, that I've been doing this so far is I've been coming out the headphone out. And what we have is we have tracks and we have click and these are physical inputs. So that's the way I have them configured right now. They're physically going into inputs five and input six on my mixer right now. So another option that I can do here, if I go back into December, what I can do, I can edit the file right here. Everything that I need to go out to tracks, I pan to the left. So that would be drums, bass, tracks, and backing vocals. And then I would pan the click and the cues to the right. I'm going to save that. And now what I have to configure is instead, so track one, two, three, and four, those are all the backing tracks. So those are going to go out the main output. Well, actually, you don't even have to really worry about this. You can actually set it to whatever you want because headphones, you just get left and right. But now watch what happens when I hit play. I have my click and cues here. Well, December. Click and cues are on Guitar one. And ready, go. And then let me fast forward. All the tracks are together right here. And again, I can adjust the volume of it so the drums are too loud. Turn them down here. Backing vocals are way too loud. Turn those down right here, right? And then if I'm performing and I don't, uh, let me get to the get to the chorus again. I don't need drums. 
turn them off for the entire show. If I don't need a bass player, turn them off for the entire show. Now we just have tracks, backing vocals, and then clicking cues are on a separate file. So that can also be another valuable way to use this. And I definitely am considering switching over to that method. I haven't decided if I'm going to use USB or if I'm just going to continue to use the headphone out. All right, and last but not least, editing audio regions. So this is a little bit difficult and it's definitely time consuming, but it's really helpful because you can actually loop part of a song. So backing tracks are great, but it means you're stuck in the exact structure of a song. What if you want to do the last chorus twice at the end? What if you want to repeat the guitar solo? So you want to play eight measures of a solo instead of four. Or if you want to do an audience participation part and you don't know how long it's going to take. Well, you can with this app. It's really cool. And you can also change the structure of a song as well. It'll show you how to do both. So first of all, I'm going to do this with December Scott solo because this one has everything in it just as a single file. It'll just make things a lot easier. I'm going to hit the I button. You do want to set the BPM and I'll show you why here in a minute. So I know that this one's at 122. Even if the tempo is variable, it's still important to get it close and I'll show you why. And one more thing I'm going to do before we keep going is I want you to go to settings, user interface, assignable buttons, and this is why I like to have the last one, the next audio region and loop current audio region. That's the setup, and I'll show you why here in a second. What you're going to do is you're going to go to edit audio regions. So it's going to build the audio region right here. And you know, you can zoom in by pinching and swiping over and stuff like that. Zoomed in, I think a little too far, but you can also hit these plus and minus ones or you can pinch. Basically what you're gonna do is I'm gonna hit play. And when I want to start a new part that I might want to loop, I'm gonna push the plus symbol right here. So watch, I'm gonna hit play. December, guitar in, ready, go. Hit the play button. So I'm gonna hit pause it really quick. And now what it did, so it's a little bit off, so I have to I have to move this in for sure. But now what it did, I'm gonna zoom out. It's it's a little difficult to move around, but it gave me four bars starting at when I hit plus. That's why you want to set the BPM, because it'll give you four bars at that exact BPM. So I can click this and I can start editing it. I can move this, you know, back ready, and extend ready. it. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to click undo and you're going to see why. So when I did that, it, you know, just kind of extended this part over. So see, like it left the right one where it is. I don't want to do that. Instead, what I want to do is I'm going to hit this lock the length. And then when I move it, it'll move it exactly four bars. So now I can zoom in. And again, this is the time consuming part, but I want to make sure that it starts right on that downbeat. And I want to make sure, you know, it ends properly here. That looks like it's pretty close. If I wanted to extend it out just a tiny bit more, I would unlock it and move it over, right? So now let me pause it and let's hear if, the, if this is lining up. Sounded pretty good. So that lines up now, right? So now what I can do is I can move this over to like the chorus. So I'm going to move this all the way over to the chorus. So I got to find out where the chorus starts. Chorus, ready, go. Normally, I like to edit a lot more of this stuff, but I think it's actually important to see how tedious this is going to be, but how helpful it is going to be. So I'm going to move this so it starts right on that downbeat of that chorus. And let's see if this lines up. Play. So now it's going to repeat the chorus over and over again at that section, right? So I'm going to click it. I can give it a different color. So let's make the chorus red. Obviously, the, the full chorus is this whole measure. Well, let's, let's do it. I'm going to drag it all the way out to here. Okay, so that loops pretty well, actually. So I'm going to give it a name. So instead of new region, I'm going to call this chorus one. And I'm going to do the same thing off screen so I don't drive you guys nuts, but I'm going to do another one for verse two. Oh, it is right there. This is a pain in the ass to do. Nope, I can already tell it's not going to line up. And I can see that this is where the chorus is. So let's see if this works. Chorus go. Cool, so now it's repeating verse two. Now I have two different parts, chorus one and chorus two. And again, let's just give it a green color. You could do this for the entire song if you would like. See, so yeah, it is very time consuming. So I'm going to hit done. And now, so now I'm going to load up Scott Solo and you can already see it. So you have your chorus and your verse. So what you can do is you can tap it once to select it. And now it'll start from there. So if you, if you want to start at verse two, you can start at verse two. I'm going to tap the chorus, hit play. It'll start from the chorus, right? Now when I double tap it to stop, December. Now it'll go back to the beginning. I can tap it once and then tap it again and that loop button comes up. So now what happens, we fast forward a little bit. As soon as it gets to the end of the chorus, it's, it's going to loop that section. Very exciting. Suspense is building. Main rim. So it's going to keep repeating the chorus as long as that loop is on. If I tap it again, 
it won't. So now watch when I move it over to here, now that the loop is off, it will just continue on with the song, right? So now I can tap the verse and I can tap it again if I want it to loop. And the thing is, you can see the loop has turned on down here. I can turn it off or turn it on down here. That's why I liked doing these as assignable buttons. So right now it's gonna loop. So if I have the loop on, it will loop that section. And if I turn it off, it will not do it. Make sense? Now here's the other thing that's cool. So uh, if you did this with the entire song, this would be really helpful. Cause see how I have this enabled? So now when I hit play, when I hit this button right here, go to the next one. See, I can select between them. So it'll say verse two, or if I say go to the next one, see how it's blinking? Now what'll happen at the end of verse two, it'll go back to chorus one. Isn't that cool? So now I can do it in a different structure. So now if I wanna skip this whole middle section right here, I can, let's move forward and watch. See how it's blinking? It'll skip that middle section. And it'll go straight to verse two. Isn't that cool? See how much stuff you can do? And again, if you had the entire song mapped out, this would be you know more valuable, but this is just like, for me, this is just the parts that I wanna loop. So I'm gonna go to the chorus. I'm gonna turn on the loop. It is auto-scrolling, because remember we did the auto-scrolling in the other video. Go over to this one, hit play. It is not gonna loop, or it is going to loop. There you go. Isn't that pretty awesome? I mean, you can you can make your own structure for the songs with backing tracks. Most of the time when you're in backing tracks, you have to go exactly to the song. Not anymore with this app. Pretty powerful stuff. That's this this app is really incredible. All right, so that's it for part two of Stage Tracks 3. Part three is gonna be all about MIDI. So sending MIDI commands to your external devices and Stage Tracks 3 receiving commands from your external devices using MIDI. So that will be in part three. Also, don't forget, I am doing a giveaway to one of my subscribers for the full version of this app. All you have to do to enter is you just have to leave a comment down below. I will be doing the giveaway after the third video. So if you leave a comment on all three videos, you will triple your chances to win. Any comment left will be entered to win the giveaway. And again, once that video is out, it will be down below in the description and it'll be down below as a pinned comment as well. So that's basically it. I hope you guys found this content helpful. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It does a ton to help out the YouTube algorithm. I hate asking for it. I know it's annoying, but it really does help push the channel, push the video so more people find it. So I would appreciate it. On the end screen, I will post links to part one and part three, assuming part three is out by the time you're watching this. So you can click those links in order to watch part one or part three. Again, that will be down below in the description and as a pinned comment. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Ewell Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.